Hey y'all, I'm Rylan. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are just going to be having a very casual chat and I'll be talking about all of the books that I read in January. Now, somehow, during the month of January, I read 31 books. How did I do this? I literally have no idea, but I did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive in and talk about all of the books that I read this month. Some of the books I will likely have more to say about than others, but I'm just gonna go, yeah, through the list. Um, I am going to go in order of my least favorites, or I guess like my one star reads to my five star reads. Um, they're not in any particular order, like my least favorite book in the one star reads, like my favorite book in the one star reads, like I'm just, I listed them in a random order, um, but I will be talking about, um, yeah, my books in order of one star to five star. I will also add really fast that I do own a lot of these books physically, but for the sake of me um, and the fact that I don't really feel like finding all the physical books that I read in January, I am just going to have the photos on the screen when I talk about every book that I read. So a lot of these books were physical copies that I had and read, but I'm just gonna put the picture on the screen for this video. So without further ado, let us talk about the 31 books that I read in January. Starting with my one star reads, I had three of those. First, I had Scream For Us. This was a romance and I just wasn't a fan of it. It didn't make sense to me. There were random like plot points added in just for the sake of filling pages in my opinion um, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. I also read Melt For Us, which is the sequel. Why did I read the sequel to a book that I rated one star? Call it curiosity, but I didn't. And I also rated this book one star. The sequel was called Melt For Us. This is like a uh, Christmassy romance where I Scream For Us was like a Halloween type thing. Follows the same um, group of people just during these two different holidays. Next, I rated Shattered Princess one star. This is a bully romance. And in theory, or normally I really enjoy bully romances, but I just wasn't a fan of the writing. Um, it left me feeling very confused on almost every single page. Like I'm not even like exaggerating on that. Um, I didn't really know what was going on half the time. And I felt as though there were also plot points that were randomly thrown in there or like shifts between characters that there was no development um, between. And it just left me feeling very confused and unsatisfied. So I rated that book one star as well. Moving on to my two star reads, I had three books um, as well. The first book that I rated two stars was To Tell You the Truth by Gillian McMillan, I believe is the author's name. I was gifted this book back in October or September of 2020 and I finally picked it up and I'm glad that I did, but I just wasn't a fan of this thriller. I had the audiobook which helped, but I was just very bored and uninterested in it and I wasn't a fan of the direction that the story took. Yeah, so I gave this one two stars. I also rated The Keeper of Night two stars. This is a young adult fantasy and I originally grabbed it from Book of the Month because it has like Shinigami in it and I really enjoyed reading Death Note um, and so I was like, I wonder what that looks like in another book. but. Again, I was just so bored and I wasn't a fan of the plot twist at the end, if that's what you want to call it. I thought the main character was kind of annoying and yeah, I just wasn't a fan of that. But my opinion on this book is very unpopular. So you can totally ignore the fact that I gave this book two stars because it really doesn't matter in the long run. Other people seem to love this book. So don't let my opinion stop you from picking it up. And then the last two star book that I read in January was Behind Her Eyes. This is a thriller and I do have a reading vlog for it that is coming out soon. Um, I started off really enjoying this book and then the last eight pages or so just totally ruined it for me. And you can see more of my thoughts in that vlog when it comes out. This is a thriller about this woman named Louise who has an affair with her boss and also becomes friends with her boss's wife. So she's juggling like these two different worlds, one being friends with Adele who is her boss's wife and then the other one having an affair with her boss. And 
Adele is a very shady character and she we get lots of chapters from her points of view and she was the one like I was very intrigued by her character because it was just so like mysterious but by the end of the book I was so mad I was livid I was so mad I just said don't understand why the book went in that direction but it did it's fine I gave the book two stars I will be watching the Netflix show still at some point um yeah but I hated I hate is a strong word I was not a fan of the book and it's really only the last eight pages but I just cannot pretend that they don't exist because they do so gave that book two stars moving on to my three star reads from January I had eight of those the first three star read that I had was The Half Sister by Sandy Jones this is another thriller it is about two sisters and um like another sister is introduced and she's a half sister to them and I'm not gonna lie I don't remember the book at this point this was my second book of the year that I read or my third book um I read it in the first couple of days of January when I was still sick and it was pretty unmemorable but like it was fine at the same time I had the audiobook for this one which I had for a lot of the books that I read this month and that definitely helped but this was just a very average thriller to me in the end yeah, so I wasn't a huge fan, didn't love it, didn't hate it either. I also rated Where They Found Her three stars. I read this book for the Book Troop Book Club, which is hosted by Gabby Reads on YouTube. I was super excited for this book. I had read one of the author's other works, which I believe was called The Perfect Marriage, and I gave that one five stars. I had the audiobook for Where They Found Her as well, and it was just very overwhelming in terms of the amount of perspectives we get. I was very confused for a while about who we were reading about during certain chapters and it made me sad more than anything. Um, the plot twist at the end, I was really rooting for one of the characters and the fact that something happened that I was not expecting. I don't know, I just wasn't a fan of it and it didn't really fit like based off the rest of the book. I don't know if that makes sense but yeah, that plot twist was a big factor in my overall rating of the book, um, but also just in general. Um, yeah, there was just a lot going on in this one. I also rated Secrets We Hunt three stars. This is a romance. It is a companion novel to, I believe, The Games We Play, which is a spicy romance novella. I gave this book three stars as well. Obviously, I think I just said that. I've already forgotten though. Um, it was fine. Not my favorite romance. Um, I love a good novella and this author definitely has a lot of good ones out there this one just wasn't a new favorite of mine the forgetting this book was also three stars for me it started off really strong um this is a ya horror slash thriller book and a romance was introduced which to an extent i did like it but i felt as though that became the overarching plot of the story and i wasn't a huge fan of that i also got bored by about the 50 percent point and needed some more stuff to kind of keep my interest but instead we just got romance which was not what I wanted going into that book especially because it was very much a book about sex trafficking and the horror surrounding that and how now and how it happens in places that we might not even be aware of it happening and how how just bad it is but the book took a twist that I just wasn't a fan of. I also rated his wife's sister three stars this is a, another thriller it was fine the main character was super annoying and I knew in the end that he was going to not be good but I just he annoyed me and I wasn't a fan of the plot twist at the end either and I don't know what it is with all these thrillers and their plot twists that just aren't hitting me the right way but this one was kind of just annoying and I wasn't a fan of it. I am moving through these books really fast we are already like almost halfway through this is awesome anyway the next book that I rated three stars was Satan's Affair. This is a very dark romance and I don't know how I feel about it. Like at the same time, I kind of loved it. I just, I wasn't a fan of the end of the book, but this book is, it's not a prequel to the Haunting Adeline duet, which I just finished the first book in last night, but there are parts of it that connect to Haunting Adeline so I went ahead and read the novella really fast in January. It was a very quick read and my feelings on it are very mixed but at the same time like I kind of loved it so I just settled on three stars. This book definitely is not for everybody and I would definitely recommend looking up the trigger warnings for it if you have any interest in reading this dark romance. 
I also rated Allison and the Torrid Tea Party three stars. This is the second book in the Underland, Underworld, Underland, yeah, series. I will talk about the first book when I get to my four star books, but this book was very steamy, but I was so bored throughout some of it, and the chapters are so long. I think this is like a 400 page book almost, and it had like nine chapters in it. And I was like, why are these chapters like taking me an hour to get through? But I will be reading the third book just because I really want to see how the trilogy ends. I think that this is a very fun take on the Alice in Wonderland stories. Um, it's just a lot spicier and has lots of attractive men in it. My last three star read for January was A Deal with the Elf King. I read this book for the book club that I co-host, uh, the Book Boyfriends Are Better book club. The link to our discord is in the description down below if you would like to join us in that book club. This book was fine. I didn't really see a ton of plot in it, not because there was a bunch of smut in it, because there wasn't at all really. I just, I don't know, I just felt like they were in the castle the entire time and I was kind of bored with that. But this is a fantasy romance and it was fine overall, not a new favorite of mine, but it was still enjoyable and it was a pretty quick read. I also had one three and a half star read and that was from Blood and Ash. I had put this book on several TBRs during the first couple of months of 2021 and I just never got around to it. So on a whim, a couple of us in a book club that I'm in decided that we wanted to pick it up during the last couple of days of January and read it. I am very excited to say that I really enjoyed it. I loved the main male character. He was perfect and that plot twist blew my mind, but I was also very bored until he became an integral part of the story. And that's why I gave this book 3.5 stars, but I will definitely be picking up the sequel at some point uh, in the next couple of months. Moving on to my four star reads, I actually had 11 of those, which I do feel pretty good about. The first book that I rated four stars was The Death of Vivek Oji. I read this book on the 1st of January and read it all in a day. I thought this book was beautifully heartbreaking. I gave it four stars, obviously. This is a literary fiction book. The only thing that kept me from giving it five stars is the fact that I was confused uh, quite a bit um, in the plot line just because it went back and forth and I wasn't quite sure what the like timeline of the story was. But other than that, I really enjoyed this book and it definitely hit me really hard. I also rated Priceless four stars. I really enjoyed it. I would read it again for sure. Once I got into it, I was honestly addicted. I love Patrick. He can be my new boyfriend. Next, I rated Whispers in the Roars four stars. This is a dark romance that broke my heart, but also made me happy at the same time. This book is also not for everybody, and I would recommend looking up the trigger warnings for this one before going into it if you have any interest in reading it, but I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything about the book because it is better to go in not knowing, aside from the potential triggers, but would recommend. I also gave Radio Silence four stars. This was one of the books on my 22 books to read in 2022 challenge. I'm not going to talk a lot about this book because I do have a review video up on that. If you are interested in watching it, I will tag it above, but I really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars. I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I also rated Violeta by Isabel Allende four stars. I cannot get over how beautiful this book was. I was tearing up at the end. This is a historical fiction book but also kind of literary fiction as well as it is a letter that is written in 2020 from our main character Violeta to her grandson I believe and she basically just talks about her entire life. So a lot of the book takes place in the past but we do know that it is 2020 when she writes the letter. I also gave Obsession by Ivy Smoak four stars. This is the Hunted series, the Temptation series um, written from Professor James Hunter's point of view. It was honestly just chef's kiss. Like I love James Hunter. He is so amazing. I need to read like the spinoff of that series because I miss him a lot and he is just top tier in my opinion. This is a romance. It's a professor student romance and this is the first book in like the series um, just written from his point of view. So like I already knew the whole story going into it because I read the original series from Penny's point of view, but this one was just 
so good because we got to see James's thoughts and I just love James. Anyway, I gave that book four stars. <laughs> I also gave A Killer Harvest four stars. This is a thriller. I did a reading vlog for it. I will tag it above. Not gonna share my thoughts about this one. Um, I read it at the same time as I read The Forgetting because I thought they had very similar like synopsi, synopsises. I never know the plural of that word. They sounded very similar to me so I did a reading vlog for it. Gave it four stars, very chaotic, but I really enjoyed it in the end. Six Crimson Cranes is a YA fantasy and I also gave this book four stars. I read it for the Shelf This Book Club, which is coasted, which is hosted by Bailey from Is Bailey Reading. I will have her channel linked in the description down below. I was pleasantly surprised by this book. I don't read a ton of fantasy. I don't read a ton of YA fantasy. So I really had a lot of fun with this one. It was a tad too long in my opinion. Literally, as I said the word Six Crimson Cranes, I got an email from Amazon talking about a recommendation that they have. And like the, the subject line was Six Crimson Cranes. That's really weird. Anyway. It was a little bit too long in my opinion, but I had a really fun time with it and cannot wait to pick up the second book when it comes out in August or September. I also read Triple Threat. This is another book by Kay Webster. I <sighs> loved it. I gave it four stars, but I really, really did enjoy it. I think the second book in the duet uh, will be five stars from me. This is about three uh triplets and they have to infiltrate the life of this girl named Landry kind of like laundry but um anyway yeah like she lives in an abusive household her dad um ba torments her and her younger sister but basically she's not like allowed to leave except to go to college and yeah basically she's just under a lot of control by her dad and the triplets are like told by their evil uncle that they have to like find a way to take her to bring down her dad because her dad is like this really rich dude and he sucks. But anyway, really loved the brothers. They were awesome. Was kind of hoping for some more steam, but hopefully the second book will have all of that. I also rated Allison's Adventures in Underland four stars. This was the first book that I mentioned earlier in the Underland series that is a really fun Alice in Wonderland retelling. I enjoyed this book quite a bit more than the first one. It wasn't as steamy, but plot-wise there was a lot more going on throughout it. The last four star read that I had for the month of January was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I do have a review video of this book coming out, so I'm not going to share my thoughts on it. But I really enjoyed it. This is a YA fantasy with a little bit of mystery and romance in it. Now we have gotten to my five star reads for January and I had five of those. First up I rated Barbarian Alien five stars. I read this book in two sittings. I was kind of obsessed. I had the special edition from NetGalley and would highly recommend picking this book up. This is an alien romance and one that I would not have expected to love as much as I did. It was just so fun and heartwarming and overall it's just a really really fun time and I'm hoping to hear news soon of some more books in that series getting made into special editions but we'll see if that happens or not. I also gave A Dowry of Blood five stars. I also have a review video out for this one and I will link it or tag it above. Not gonna share my thoughts on it, but I thought it was really beautiful, dark and lyrical and I gave it five stars. Absolutely loved it. I also binge read three books by L. Kennedy this month and they were all five star reads for me. The first book that I read was him. This book is co-authored by Serena Bowen, I believe is the author. This is a sports romance about Wes, who is a gay hockey player and he's been in love with his best friend Jamie for forever basically and Jamie kind of figures out um, his sexuality in the first book and they navigate their relationship and it was just so good. It was amazing. I really really enjoyed this one. It was so heartwarming and it just touched my heart. It made me sad and happy and laugh and cry and loved it. I also read the sequel, which is called Us. This follows Jamie and Wes almost right after the end of the first book, maybe a couple of months after, but my heart was just so attached to the characters by the end of the first book that by the beginning of the second book, I was just a goner. 
I was so attached to these characters and really really loved following their story. And then finally I read The Score. This is another hockey romance and this is between Dean and Allie. They are both characters that have already been mentioned in the off-campus series The Deal. The Score is the third book in the off-campus series. The Deal is the first book. Loved all the books in the series so far. They've all been five stars for me and I'm so excited to read the last book in the series, which I cannot remember the name of right now, but I hope to read that soon. My heart just bursts with every couple that I read by L. Kennedy, and I am going to be very sad that the series is over soon. But yeah, this is another sports hockey romance. I believe that that is what L. Kennedy mostly writes, but it works for me, and I really, really, really enjoyed it as well. Wow, that only took like half an hour to film. That's exciting. The video, the final cut won't be that long because I do have quite a bit of editing to do for this one, but those are the 31 books that I read in January. I definitely started off the year strong and my goal to read 200 books. Hopefully I can keep that up in the coming months. We'll see what happens, but I definitely found a couple of new favorites during the month of January and cannot wait to see uh, what new favorites I find during the rest of the year. Thank you all so much for watching this probably very chaotic January wrap-up video. I really appreciate it if you made it this far. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next video.